tables are critical, absolutely critical, to you building good spreadsheets and even building good Power BI reports that feed to spreadsheets. Okay, why are they so good? What do you use them for? How do you create one? What are the features? I'm gonna show you all this stuff. This is the essential guide to tables. Let's go. This block of data looks like a table, but it's not an official capital T table. How do you turn it into one? Well, if you can remember the shortcut, you click in a cell and press Control T for table. If you can't remember that, under the home menu, there's format as table. And you can pick whatever style you like. I quite like this one with the alternating colored rows. My table has headers is ticked because it is. That box doesn't always get selected. So just click OK. And there we go. Now you'll notice I had a complete gap. So therefore it stopped there. Now I could just grab this little corner and drag down. And now this becomes part of the table as well. Or I could have simply gone back at the start before I press Control T and simply highlighted all the data to begin with, then press Control T or format as table and it would have worked. Okay, so here's my table. So what's so good about it, okay? Well, just simple little things like the alternating rows, okay? That's great. And if I insert a row by going right click, insert, table rows, it just inserts and there's a nice gap. Same thing, right click, delete table rows, right click, delete table rows. Okay, It's just the color coding stays, which is great, okay? But nothing particularly special, so what? Right, what is really cool about tables is things like when you scroll down the page, you always know what column you're in. Okay, if I click over here, I'm not in a table anymore. You can see the column names. As soon as I click back in a table, you always know, so no more freeze panes, right? That's awesome. Then we've got things like highlighting columns of data. So let's say there was a gap here and maybe a gap there. And people have done this in the past. You know, it's like control, shift, down arrow, down arrow, control, shift, down arrow, and over and over again and then you go too far and you go back up and so on, okay? So that's just painful. With tables, control spacebar, okay? Lovely. And if I was to do a simple sum, I could go equal sum, okay? Open the bracket, click on any cell, control spacebar, it highlights the whole thing, okay? And that formula, quantity sold, the sum, is much more meaningful a formula. So formulas are better with tables, okay? So it, it just works. But why is it called table five? Well, that's because when you create a table, it just gives it a numerical sequence. If you go to the table design menu, and this only appears while your cursor is inside the table, okay? Up in the top left, you can see the table name. My personal habit is to begin my tables with TBL. And this might be um, sales, okay? So that's now the name of my table. And then my formula is here, sum of table sales, quantity sold. A much more meaningful formula. Okay, that's good in itself. And we're only getting started, right? These are the, just the basics. Tables do way more than this. While you're here, you can right click on table name, just the word table name, and you can add it to your quick access toolbar. So you can always see the name of your table. You can even edit it inside that little box, which is really handy, okay? You should be using tables a lot, so that's a great option to have. Okay, then you can do things like add slices. So you can do insert a slicer for maybe the product code. Click OK. And now I've got a nice filter to filter my data for product code, okay? So you can do different bits of analysis, nice and easy, filtering things, really quite handy. Other things up in this table design menu. You can turn on a total row. So simply toggle the total row on, and there we go. We've got a nice little sum. Okay, you can do average, you can do max, you can do 
counts, okay, all sorts of options. So underneath each column, you can just do counts and stuff like this. You know, it's just nice and easy. And if you don't need it anymore, you can just turn it off, which is beautiful. If you don't want the banded rows, you can turn them off and on. Banded columns is unusual, but you can do it. Okay, you can toggle off the filter buttons if you don't like those. Personally, they're really handy for just clicking on, but you can always right click on something and say filter by value, just to filter that table. Okay, so we've got a whole bunch of, you know, nice user interface type features. There's other key reasons, okay, to actually use tables. Okay, so let's get into the real good stuff now. Okay, that's the little warm up. One of my favorite things, the fact that tables auto expand. So let's say I wanted to look up name. Okay, so product name. See how the table automatically expanded? Now I'm gonna do a lookup against this table. So before I do, I'm gonna turn this into a table. Now I could highlight everything or simply click in a cell, control T, my table has headers, click OK, give it a name. Okay, so I'm going to go up to my little shortcuts tab here, TBL, and let's call this products. And now in my name, I'm going to go equals X lookup, loving X lookup, look up the product code, comma, and see it says at product code. All that means is this row, the at sign, product code, right, and then a comma. I'm gonna look in this range, so I'm just gonna click on any cell and press Control spacebar to highlight that column. So it's looking up in table products, product code. See how the formula is much more meaningful? Comma. And then I'm gonna, well, let's do this a different way. Rather than clicking and suing, doing Control spacebar, you can just hover over the top of a column to select it. Okay, table products, product name. Close the bracket, so the formula is nice and meaningful, but check this out. As soon as I press enter, the formula auto fills down. That's the key thing to tables, okay? Nice, consistent formulas. And if I were to add something new, okay, let me just scroll down here. I'm gonna ha add a whole bunch of new stuff, okay? I'm gonna Cut all that, come up the top here and just paste it. There we go, look, the formula auto filled down, which is brilliant. Okay, let's do this, let's do price. And all I'm gonna do, copy that formula, go into it, and rather than product name, what you can do, because these are table names and table structures, I can just backspace the word product name and click on any of the other fields here. So product price and press enter. Beautiful. So good, consistent structure. When you add rows or you insert rows, the formula auto copies down. It just works really, really well. All right, what if you decide for some reason you don't want it to be a table anymore? Okay, that's fine. What you can do is go to table design and click convert to range. And that'll just turn it back into a non-table. It'll still have all the formatting, but again, if you insert rows, the formatting won't keep, uh, the formulas won't spill down, etc. So. You know, there's no real need to turn something not to be a table anymore. All right, so why use tables apart from this stuff? So this stuff's good already, but why use them? Well, let's say you want to create a pivot table. Well, you can click inside here and go summarize with pivot table, or if you've always done it this way, insert pivot table, okay? And it'll say, hey, the table I'm gonna use is table sales and I'll create it in a new worksheet. And if I put, let's say, quantity sold in the values and name in the rows, okay, there's my data. But the nice thing about this is, 
no more having to click this section here, change data source when you add more records. Because if I go back into the table, if I added more records to the bottom of this table, okay, I'm just going to copy, let's just copy this one here, okay, paste it, and let me make this a really big number, 100, okay. That new row automatically gets picked up by the table. It doesn't show yet because I haven't refreshed it, but if I right click and refresh, there we can see the batteries just had that one million added to it. Okay, undo, there we go, it's gone. Right click, refresh, there it is. So no more ever having to go into your pivot table button here and choose change data source, which was always a pain. So that's a really good reason. Another good reason is maybe for dynamic dropdowns. Okay, so maybe this column let me get rid of everything, needs to be a drop-down list. So I'm going to just highlight the whole column, go data, data validation. Okay, I'm going to choose this list. However, however, I would recommend naming this little list first. So rather than doing that, I'm just going to highlight this little list first. The reason to do this is it can then refer to it when it's on a different sheet. So if I ever happen to move this, all my validation won't break. So that's highlighted. I go to my name box and call this my DD product list. Okay. And then from here, I just did control spacebar. I can go data validation, pick list. Click in here. If you remember what it's called, then type it in. I can't, so I press F3, little, little shortcut, DD product list. Okay, and click OK. So here's my nice little drop down list. So let's say A04, and see it stops at B05. Okay, I'll actually pick B05. But if I come down here and do a B006, again, I don't have to do anything fancy, it just shows up. There's B006, the table expands, therefore the range expands. It's just all good, okay, all good. All right, and then one last important reason for using tables is Power Query loves tables. So if I want to get this table into Power Query to do some more analysis or maybe load it into the data model or split some of these columns apart or do something fancy, then I can just go right click, get data from table or range which is perfect, okay, and I can do some Power Query stuff for it. Or, if I was connecting to this file, so let's just do a new file. So check out what this actually looks like, okay? So I'm gonna double click on the file, tables, and then the navigation screen, you'll see that the tables show up differently. Okay, so table products and table sales have these little blue icons, and these are safer to connect to because it doesn't matter where they are on the sheet. If somebody inserts rows or columns to the left or above, Power Query can always find them. Also, if somebody changes the name of the sheet, which can happen, again, Power Query is just looking for the actual table, which is lovely. Okay, same thing if you're using Power BI, you know, Power Query to pull data into Power BI. If you're responsible for maintaining and building those tables, then make them proper tables. And a final couple of tips. If you want to highlight all the data, click in a cell, Control A. Control A a second time grabs the heading. If you want to navigate around the four corners, Control full stop, okay, takes your cursor around the four corners each time you press it. If you had a column highlighted, Control full stop takes you to the top and the bottom. So it's just a really good way of structuring your data. Even if you want to move a column, make sure you double click to get the heading selected as well. So one click or control space bar, control space bar, grabs the heading, four way arrow, drag it to the left or to the right, and you can move your data around knowing you've got all 5,000 rows or however big your table is. 
So I'm a big fan, love tables, think they're critical to building good spreadsheet design. Hope you find that tutorial useful. Before you go, check out one of my other videos or playlists and click the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.